through them. Hello and welcome back to the European Championships 2018 here in Berlin. Matt, we're almost there. Eight contestants left. Yep. From over 1,600 players, we have just eight remaining. The largest European championship we've yeah. ever run, and we're down to just the eight players. Yeah, I neglected to mention the largest part. And so there's only two rounds left that are the really, 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 really important ones that get you to, to decide the who's world going to the world championships. Yes, we're about to send four of these guys home. Uh, they will be leaving with a nice trophy at very least, but it's not yeah. what they're here for. And uh, this match, chose, as chosen by Jake Quincy, because why not? Yeah. Um, it's going to be Luke Parks versus Marcello Barberi. So you have an absolute titan of a match here for you guys. Yeah. So we've been doing lots of statistics over the weekend, but this is possibly the most uh, amazing set that oh, you're going to hear. Oh, this is God tier. God tier level Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. We've apparently. seen a lot of A tier players over the course of this weekend getting 70% win rates. This Both is A plus. Of these guys or S. have an over 80% win rate. I, I cannot it's believe. Like in the stratosphere, when you consider the yeah. level of player that we've had on at around 70, and you're like, yeah, I can see why these guys are like, yeah. I see them all the time winning stuff. And then you've got these two guys that are sitting on like 80 plus. Yeah. For every five people these guys duel, only one of them has the, you know, the, the chance of winning. That's just crazy. And that's not even how that works. <laughs> well, <laughs> in, yeah. theory, in theory, theory. Yeah, but it's like you sit that's... down and you go, oh, yeah. maybe, maybe just everybody who meets them only has 20%. Yeah. And it never comes up yeah. because that rate wouldn't be that high. Well, it would be exactly. That's the point of statistics. There yeah. you go. We just learned a bit of math. Anyway, so yes, we have uh, we have um, you know a lot of tournaments for both of these guys. They have bo both over like fifteen tournaments. Uh, I know much a little bit less, but still, eighty-one percent is still pretty nearly good. eighty-two. Yeah, nearly eighty-two actually. As, yeah. Um, um, Luke, how's Luke Parks doing? Luke Parks is on eighty point. 80.3 so they're both very very close um two percent in favor of marcello they're playing yeah. a mirror match so we know that that's already 50 50 50 50 over the course of this weekend and the main difference between these decks is not so much the main deck it's actually in the side decks i'm sure tom will go yeah. over that with you guys a little bit later but it'd be interesting to see how that impacts this match yeah i just want to reiterate the you know how much of a titan luke parks has been in the regional circuit this season but again, we we have to go over the fact that Marcello, last season at the world, ch going to the World Championships, his road was a 17-0. Anyone who stood in his way just got knocked down. Yeah, that yeah. was just it. 100% win rate over the course of 17 games is just unheard of. Uh, you know, most people will at least lose a game in Swiss somewhere, but no, that he was XO going into the top cut and then went all the way to win the whole thing. And then finished third at World Championships yeah. with the field that we had last year. It was incredible. Yeah. I don't feel like there's much more for us to oh, say. Oh, yeah. We're just, we're just teasing the main event here. So let's yeah. just take you over to uh, Thomas Rose and Oliver German are on the floor commentary team. They're not on the floor. They're on the desk. Uh, and they're going to be walking you through the play-by-play -play for this uh, excellent, shoot, sure to be excellent match. Take it away, guys. Thank you, Luke and Matt. We are hyped for this match. I can tell you guys are too. And it's very nice to see we're on opposite ends of the stage, but everybody's in a very celebratory mood and feeling like, okay, this is going to shape up to be a really nice match. Yeah, we've got two huge names coming up against each other. Luke Parks has been doing so, so well this yes. season. And obviously, everyone knows Marcello. Oh, yeah. Absolutely yeah. destroying our we, competition last year. We should point out that we did feature Marcello before in our round one feature match. That was the first feature match yesterday because we always go with that cheap strategy of featuring last year's winner in the first uh, match. He did lose that match. He said... Um, didn't feel that comfortable in the new feature match area because it's open, everybody can see what's happening. Didn't help. And in the end, he, he was uh, dealt a loss. And then we saw him again way, way later. That was prior to the top 64 where we interviewed him. He was on 55th play, something like that, 57th. Yeah, he finished uh, the Swiss portion of the tournament with eight wins, two losses, and one, one draw. draw. In the last round was the yes. draw. And he, in, I, yeah, uh, interestingly enough, he moved up in the rankings with the draw because I expected him to move down with the draw. That's why I said it, it could not be enough when he was like 57th or something. But he moved up in the rankings with that draw, interestingly enough. So uh, sometimes tournaments shape up in a different way than you expect. Let's take a look at how the top eight shaped up. This is our bracket at the moment. So in the top left corner, you can see this is our feature match for the 
round, Luke Parks versus Marcello Barberi. Uh, Matt and Luke talked a lot about those two guys, so uh, we're going to save that for the time being. Lower left corner, Nicolas Meyer from Germany with Sky Striker Trickstar going up against Jake Quincy. And now that I read that, I think Nicolas Meyer was in the top cut a few times before. Not 100% sure, but somewhat uh, certain. Nicolas Meyer here, the last German representative in this top cut after so many of them made it through to the top 64. That's true, yeah. I, I tried to overread that on purpose. Then we have the top right corner with Alessandro Garanzini with Sky Striker Trickstar McKnight going up against Robin Bachofner from Switzerland, one of the players that uh, did a lot of playtesting together with... Uh, who was it? Was it Lorenzo Roma? Um, no, it wasn't Lorenzo. But he did a lot of playtesting with one of the other players that was extremely successful this weekend. The name eludes me just now. And in the lower right corner, big upset there because Francesco Simoncelli from Italy with his Sky Striker Trickster deck kicked out Joshua Schmidt. And he's now going up against Startis Vastardis from Greece, who's playing Sky Striker without anything else. There's some interesting uh, breakdown of the decks that we see going into here. There are four... Goki decks and three Sky Strike, uh, four a total of four different Sky Striker variants. Yes. Um, most of the Goki decks sat on the left hand side of the bracket with only one of the Sky Striker variants, and then the other right hand side, obviously, with three Sky Striker variants and just one Goki. So we could still see either a mirror match or perhaps the Goki clashing with the strike Sky Striker deck for our final. Right. With that, guys. I think that the stage has been set. This is going to be a super exciting match. Let's take you over to the feature match table, and then it's going to be time to duel for Marcello Barberi and Luke Parks. All right, we see Marcello on the left. Somewhat familiar position for him, because that's where he sat earlier, yesterday. And Luke on the right. And it's a Goki mirror match. Uh, one of the most important things is who goes first. Yeah, I don't know if the players have already conducted the die roll off camera or if we're about to see that, but it will make a very big difference to how the duel plays out. The, the die roll and the presence or absence of hand traps in the player playing second's hand. Right. We and see Marcello has no hand traps. Parks also with no hand traps. Who gets to play first? It's Luke Parks who's won the die roll. Yeah, that's, that's going to be clutch here. Or are we overlooking something we're not? No, so there's, there's no interaction here for Marcello. He just has to sit and wait. So it's, it's a bit of a question, how fast can he assemble that combo? The current record holder is Christopher Nielsen from Denmark, who did the entire combo, building that magical U on the field in just five minutes. Uh, speaking of Christopher Nielsen, he came very, very close, as is often the case. But he got knocked out. Maybe I can find out who knocked him out. And actually, we, we just said that. We said Christopher Nielsen very often in the top cut. But unfortunately, not even in the top eight. He actually he got kicked out right in the top 64 by Bryce Dodella from France with Sky Striker Trickstar. Um, it's probably Dodelaire. I'm not sure. Um, French duelist. So, how... On a scale from 1 to 10, how excited is Luke Parks? Uh, he looks very nervous. Uh, at this point, he knows that he's not facing into an Ash Blossom. He knows that he's not facing into a Drollen Lockbird. He's just waiting to see if there is a main deck Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit mm. waiting for that first Firewall activation. I think we might see him loosen up a bit if he's able to get through that point mm -hmm. without that Ghost Ogre coming down. And thereafter, he knows that the rest of his combo will resolve. Right. And it is as much of a mental struggle as it is like an actual struggle with the cards. Um, going up against Marcello Barberi, we said it, is, is not something that people take lightly. They don't enjoy that very often. Because more often than not, four out of five guys are not going to be coming out winning. Yeah. Uh this is all uh, a very standard combo for Parks at this point. So uh, unlike a lot of the games we saw previously where players are having to make up their plays as they go, this is just Luke going through the motions. He knows what to do here. This is the one bit of the combo that he might have some fear in him about. He'll activate the Chainlink 1 Mermaid and the Chainlink 2 Firewall, and there was no response. So now he's just going to finish off resolving that full extra link board. 
And are we going to see Marcello like shuffling up his cards at some point, or do you think he's going to wait for the whole thing to, to go through? Um, with Luke continuing to play at a sensible pace here, uh, I don't think Marcello will feel the need to shuffle up. There's plenty of time left on the round. He'll give Luke the opportunity to make a mistake. Uh, if he was worried about running out of time, he might choose to just concede at this point, but mm -hmm. there's no need. Uh, the match isn't likely to take a full 40 minutes, so he's, he's got nothing to lose really at this point by just watching and waiting. All right. Maybe you can see some interesting choices for the deck, which is something that we could also be trying to do. Um, but generally speaking, uh, Marcello is playing the straightforward version of the Guki deck with like Almost no surprises, though. Um, maybe some of the spell cards. I haven't seen one for one being played in, in Goki so far. One for one is not always a popular choice for the Goki deck list. It's naturally a deck that's fairly good at playing through Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, but one for one can build in an element that does lose to that card if mm. you're forced to rely on it. Right. And other than that, anything else that, that stands out to you? Um. Marcello also opts for Living Fossil as his secondary equip spell. Both lists seem very, very similar with the instant fusions in the main deck, no right. trap cards. There's a tarot top for Luke Park that we don't get to see on Marcello Marcello's side. Using the both both players here have the, the Terra Top and the Tacketon oh, right. Borg. Yeah, there it both is. players with Neospatian and Aquadolphin. Both players with two copies of Marauding Captain. The, the lists are almost a carbon copy mm -hmm. in the main deck. Yep. In the side deck, both players have three copies of Ghost Ogre. Both players have three copies of Twin Twisters. Uh, there is some difference, though, with uh, Luke Parks playing Red Reboot, Gadala, and Ghost Reaper. Whereas Marcello has no Ghost Reapers, instead playing Infinite Impermanence, Hey True Nade, and an Artifact Package. Mm. All right. So this first game is virtually over. And that is, of course, not good news if you're a fan of Marcello Barberi. But we get to see why Luke Parks has this high win ratio of 81%, something like that. Yeah, these two absolute titans above 80% win rates. That's not a thing that you see a huge amount of in any card game. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, oh, Luke and Jay Quincy are still in competition, right? Uh, so yes, both Luke and Jake will both uh, be on the same side of the bracket, still in the competition. Right. If they win their uh, quarterfinal matches here, they will face each other in the semi-final. Right. I'm just thinking, was Luke on the left side or on the right side of the bracket? Uh, both were on the left-hand side of the bracket. That is correct, yeah. Okay, so only one, a maximum of one players from the UK are going to go to Worlds, but I think the UK is going to take that. They're like, yeah, we're good with one. One out of two is not too bad. But first, of course, Jay Quincy has to overcome his top we, eight opponents. There will, of course, be uh, uh, a Worlds competitor for the UK via points qualification. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Luke and Jake here just fighting to try and get that second UK player yes. representative at Worlds. All right. So here is the blue U. Now it's a bit like an F that is like reversed and it goes even further I'm running out of letters <laughs> and Marcello draws for his turn I don't think Marcello has really anything that he can play here he's drawn into chunk forward a second chunk forward to make that a bit more clear because he had one already. Only uh, a board clear like uh, an evenly match. No, even an evenly match does nothing here. A dark hole or a regeki gets negated by the trigate wizard. Yeah. Marcello sees that there's nothing to play and no point trying. So that concludes our first duel between the two, two of the most successful European players in terms of win ratio. Uh, in terms of Marcello, also titles. He's got quite a nice collection. I'm not sure, did Luke Parks win anything internationally? And I don't mean to sound condescending here. It's just like actual, um, 
<laughs> question for information here. Um, I know that Luke has certainly seen a lot of success uh, at international events, but not necessarily wins. Right, and here we see some... There's one question, why didn't he link Firewall and Taketomborg into Cerberus to be absolutely safe? Perhaps there's no real good explanation for why he didn't put the Cerberus at. Um, I think we, we saw a Cerberus being used earlier in the combo and perhaps he only has access to one in the extra deck. Yeah, both players playing only a single copy of Nightmare Cerberus in their extra deck. All right. So what's going to move into the main deck for these guys? Is Marcello just going to stick with the deck he has now that he's going first, or do you think he's going to side in some cards? Marcello being able to play first, I expect that we'll see the Artifact Sanctums and his one copy of Artifact Scythe moving into the main deck. Mm -hmm. uh, with Parks playing second, the Ghost Ogres and the Ghost Reapers will both be joining the lineup. All right. And how do you make space for those uh, six cards in Luke's case? Um, in Luke's case, um, he might choose to take out cards like a uh, Terratop and Taketomborg, mm -hmm. uh, typically best playing first into an open board. Um, That's two cards? Yes. Uh, Called by the Grave may also be a card that he chooses to side out. That's a... Mm. Uh, strongest when you're playing first and you need to beat hand traps. Okay. Um, but uh, for Marcello, I think we're just going to be looking at the uh, the artifacts. Um, and what he would side out for those, uh, perhaps he might decide that he doesn't need some so many hand traps in the main deck if he's playing first. Okay. We just had some changes to the deck list. Um, not, not that the players decided to change something. It's just that uh, we forgot a card while typing up the deck list. Now we got everything. Uh, how many side deck cards does Luke run is a question here. It's uh, 15. Both players have the full 15 side and extra deck cards. And that, that's a question not coming from the chat, I know, because nobody would be asking that in the chat. That is from our feature match table charge, because apparently they might have counted the cards now during the side decking and um, came up with 14. But seems like, <laughs> judging from the expression on the judge's face, um, that was a, a miscount on his part. And you could maybe you could make it out when you looked closely at Luke Parks' face. He just looked like, <gasps> and then, <whew. laughs> and now he's uh, he's feeling comfortable again. Yeah, comfortable. I, I hope that they haven't thrown the players too much off nah, guard. It's, there. A, it's a little adrenaline rush. This is what gets you going for for such an important match. Just don't break the confidence. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Luke Fox is uh, looking at the audience. Some of his friends are like waving at him, like, "Come on, you got this." And he tries to calm them down and be like, "Yeah, let's see, let's see. Um, it's a bit too early to tell." Um, wait, and see we, wait until we see the opening hands. Yeah. All right. So here, Marcello will be uh, hoping for any real access to his assault, and Luke Parks will be hoping for as many hand traps as possible. Yes. It looks like uh, Marcello there still with Ghost Reapers in his deck. Hasn't chosen to side those out. He knows that if he falls victim to a hand trap on an early summon, mm. they can still be useful for preventing Parks from playing as well. Right. So I think they're done shuffling their own decks. Now they are shuffling their opponent's deck. And Marcello will be kicking things off for this second duel in our top eight feature match. Yes. Oof. Yeah, now we have a little side discussion when we had the best format and when we had the worst format in the Twitch chat. We're not going to chime in here. We're going to try and focus on the match, guys. We see the opening hand for Luke Parks and talk Luke about hand Parks traps. Luke has three wow. different hand traps. 
I mean, that would be terrible if he goes first. But look at Marcello. He's Marcello also has three. four hand traps and no access to Isolde. His oh. hand does absolutely nothing. Wow. That's just that's so unexpected, that whole turn of events here. Marcello going first, but draws the card that says, I want to go second. So Marcello will be able to slow the game right down here. Uh, will we see the Ghost Reaper coming down after the normal summon of Suprex to take out any copies of Isolde from the extra deck for Luke Parks? Yeah, and the question, did Marcello decide to let Luke go first? No, he did not. He just said, your turn. Um, Marcello had no play. Yeah. And that's why he was uh, with five cards in hand. And now Luke is smiling a little bit because he feels like, I think you're in the same you're sitting in the very, you're riding with the very same boat that I just entered here. Um, however, he does have some play, and of course, he's got the advantage of one additional card. So, uh, Luke here just able to push for 3,400 damage before he ends his turn with those hand traps, I expect. He may, of course, choose to uh, trade in his two monsters to leave with just one, uh, putting his Ghost Reaper alive, but without any assault in his extra deck. There's no real benefit to uh, putting himself in that position, so... Ooh, that's very, very rough did, for much. Did he Barbarian. attack? I think Luke might have just forgotten to do any damage there. And Marcello is just shaking his head. He's not happy with this hand. He, he drew, he oh my god, he drew into another Ash Blossom. This is just adding insult to injury. And, and Luke Parks can can read his face. Normally, Marcello Barberi is not known to give away information like that. But it's just so plain obvious what is happening here that it's written all over his face. You could see Marcello setting a card and Luke Parks immediately being like, is it my turn again? And not in a, not in a rushing way, just... Y you could tell he feels sad to some degree. To some degree. He, he still wants to go to Worlds. I think uh, this has just been so rough for Marcello. Yeah. I think this is the worst draw we've ever uh, witnessed with him in a feature match. And he's been playing some different decks. I mean, he's been playing the ABC deck when nobody else would, and uh, it never let him down like that. Yeah, we see uh, another card being used there to negate the second attempt for Luke Parks to resolve that MX Saber Invoker effect. But here with his... Uh, Normal summon for the turn not yet being used. He might want to make some link plays and start trying to search cards with the Suprex. Of course, we can see Marcello has the Ash Blossom in hand to stop that. And speaking of hand traps, Luke Parks drew into the fourth hand trap. There's a there's a very clear um, I think between theme in this in this match between both players put together, we have seen a total of three cards being drawn that are not hand traps. Yeah, that's unheard of. So much defense, where's the offense? So, Luke Parks, <laughs> speaking of where's the offense, here we go. So, if uh, Luke had had his wits about him at the start of the match, uh, Marcello would be down to 800 life points at this point. I think Luke missed his first battle phase, uh, being completely thrown off by the fact that he mm. thought he was going first, when in fact, there had already been a previous turn. Yeah. Can hardly blame him, to be honest. I'm very surprised that Marcello didn't activate his Ash Blossom on the search effect in the graveyard. Yeah, there might be a strategy there, but um, here, here's another hand trap. Um, uses it now. I think that was uh, perhaps a small mistake from Marcello, but uh, I don't think it's going to make any difference at this point. Right, so Gookie Suprex. Although, having said that, if Marcello had negated the first Gouki search, his normal summon Suprex would have been bigger than the uh, underclock taker left on field for Parks. Hmm. So, what's it. When it's sitting there, it's not doing much, right? You don't want to have it sitting there, generally speaking. Uh, which card do the you Gouki Suprex. Uh, Suprex, no. Suprex, the idea is you will normal summon it, it will special summon another Gouki from hand and get straight to the assault. But Marcello yeah. just hasn't drawn any other yeah, monsters. What else can you do here? Here's an attack. This, is, this game is not going the way it should be going. Uh, Luke Parks has a ridiculous hand. 
and, and he has a field. Marcello Barberi had a ridiculous hand, but he didn't have a field. So that's that's the difference maker so far. Yeah, and we could really be seeing the other side of things if Marcello had just uh, used his Ash Blossom on that first Gouki search, forced Luke Parks to end on only a 1,000 attack Link Monster, and the Suprex would have attacked over it. Right. In a game that looked like it was over so soon, there's been there's been potentially an issue that really changed the tide of how it plays out. So Luke Parks is not making a very amused face, but he's sitting in a pretty good spot. He's got the Re Scorpio in hand, Nightmare Unicorn on the field, and four hand traps. Four hand traps. So he tribute summons away that Nightmare Unicorn for the Re Scorpio. Marcello is checking the graveyard again. And all of that is fine, and it's back to Marcello, who did draw a spell or a trap card called by the grave. Yeah, that would have been nicer a little bit earlier. The two Rescorpios will trade into each other, both trigger their searches in the damage step, so no Ash Blossoms can come down here. And Luke Parks is the first to find a card in Gookie Rematch. And what's Marcello going to go search for? Uh, with the rematch already in hand, he'll just get a Gookie monster here. Possibly the headbat. Um, he's already used his normal summon for the turn. Yeah, he searches for the headbat, and now he can activate the rematch to get the two Gogi names he's finally managed to put together in his graveyard out onto the field. And now he's got some action. For the first time in this match, not in this duel, in this match, Marcello Barberi has any action. That must feel really, really bad for him, but better late than never. Parks is going to follow this up by activating that uh, Troll and Lockbird in his hand to prevent any further searches. So whilst we saw a real glut of hand traps in the opening hand for Marcello being used to prevent Parks from sealing the game early, yep. Parks has been just accumulating those hand traps in his own hand with nothing yet to negate. Yeah, he must be like, do something. I want to play my cards. No, like, if if Marcello can fight through this, it's going to be a, a big uh, proof of morale on his part. That he's not just like giving up this and be like, okay, I, I'm done with this. So here is... And the called by the grave is likely to follow here if Marcello really wants to push for this turn. Marcello is checking. He's, he might be expecting another hand trap. Even a second copy of Drawn and Lockbird, if he chains the Cooled by the Grave, would be devastating. Yeah. So, so he's really thinking about this. Is there a better option for Cooled by the Grave? Mm, he, yep, decides, he takes out the draw. He decides there isn't. So Drawn and Lockbird uh, gets negated, basically, by that Cooled by the Grave. Drawn and Lockbird takes the negation, but as soon as he sends for the effect of uh, Isold, he's going to meet that Ash Blossom, and I don't think there's anything left in his hand that can be played this turn. Oof, that hurts so much. That that must be so tough for Marcello Barberi. He's not yeah. checking his graveyard. He won't even want to add that sword back to his hand. There's only two warriors in his grave right now, his two Gookies. He needs to leave them there in case he gets another turn and another access to Gouki rematch. Luke at this point already has his rematch in hand with two different Gouki's in Grave, mm. so he can start his turn making plays. Marcello's thinking about his next play, but it is There's no card in his hand that yeah. can be activated, but he might have wanted to bluff some options. 
Now, which is fair enough. I mean, it's not like he's taking a lot of time. What was the draw for Parks there? It might have been the Ibli. I didn't quite get to see it. He looked like a monster to me. Um, yeah, the, the Nightmare Corruptor. Mm -hmm. So he has some uh, Link monsters in his graveyard already that he can summon with the effect, should he normal summon that Ibli. We know from our seat that uh, only Ash Blossom stands between Luke Parks and taking this game here. Hmm. But Luke may still be worried about playing through uh, cards. Uh, of course, no, Luke doesn't need to worry about a, a Drawn Lockbird at this point because Cooled by the Grave took out his own copy last turn, leaving Marcello unable to activate any Ash Blo any Drawn Lockbirds that he may even have in hand. Yeah. But uh, is Luke aware of that? Oh, Luke will certainly be uh, aware of all of the interactions with Cooled by the Grave. Both players here main decking those Cooled by the Graves, and they will have been dealing with the interactions all throughout the weekend so five. All right. So Luke Parks is in a very good spot right now. Marcello Barberi not so much. He's only got an Ash Blossom and Joyce Spring to defend himself together with that monster on the field, of course, the Isolde. But is that going to be enough to see another turn? Luke certainly appears to be in a winning position here. Uh, he only needs to put out a very small amount of additional attack power to be able to take this game. He has access to that Firewall Dragon effect on the field. He can return cards to hand using it. He has normal summoned this turn, uh, but he's going to be able to activate uh, the effects in the grave of his monsters to search as well as the effect of the Firewall Dragon on the field to special summon from hand. Yeah, it seems like that's what he's going for here. I think this is uh, the end of the line for, for Marcello Barberi. I'm still hopeful for some reason. I don't, I don't want to believe in, uh, in these total and absolute statements. And um, there's now a bit of a question what happened, I guess, by the judge. Well, we, we've right. seen mistakes being made already, but... Uh, yeah, no, nothing, nothing critical in any way. Not today. <clears throat> no, definitely not. <laughs> so, um, at, at past events, it was different at times. It's what uh, Tom was hinting that at there. So, um, Luke Park is just going through the motions here. Or is there anything that he could still... We, we've had that situation in, I think, the last event where somebody thought he had won. He told us after the match that he's done the moves that he was doing a million times. He just messed it up because in the in the time, uh, in the playtesting, he always had infinite time to do his moves, basically infinite time. And suddenly with the clock ticking down, he was making some mistakes um, that he wasn't used to just yeah. because he didn't have as much time thinking. Luke is definitely looking very stressed for a man who should have absolute certain game this turn. Exactly, that's what I mean. So the, the question is, is Luke Parks going to lose it? And I'm not meaning the match or something, I just mean like his concentration, his focus, and that might cost him or end up biting him here. Well, we see some disputes going on with uh, interactions with the judges. And there was... Um, <clears throat> All I know here is that there was a verbal warning for Marcello last turn. Um, not entirely sure why. Maybe it, the judge felt like um, there was some slow play? Um, Ma well, as you say, Marcello did take time at the end of his turn with no cards that he could activate at that point. Perhaps they felt that that was uh, more than should be allowed. Yeah. But know that there's been some slow play occurring on the stream and they want to tighten up how they uh, act around that. Yeah. Yeah, also you, you, you want to be consistent, of course, in the, in the way you're enforcing the rules. Um, and I think at the moment it might be Marcello who's asking his opponent to play a little bit faster. Either, either it's that or it's a question about a card interaction, but I would be surprised if it's that. So maybe we can uh, pick up the phone, our hot, hot and rod, <laughs> hot and rod, uh, red little telephone is what I was trying to say and get a, get a hotline answer from the judges at the feature match table. And um, the short reply is there's a miscommunication happening, or there was a miscommunication happening with um, what's being summoned, I guess. 
There may have been some issue with a... Uh okay, so no, uh, Thomas is giving us some more information. So Marcello basically said he had no response and now he feels like probably, he probably feels like chaining Ash, Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. So the question is, is Marcello Barberi going to be allowed to chain Ash Blossom or not? And did he indicate earlier that he has no response or that he has a response? So um, it's, a, it's a very technical problem that is happening here. I don't imagine that it makes any significant difference to the outcome of the match, but uh, there, there clearly has been some level of issues with the communication. Always in these situations, uh, even if uh, it is the case that the plays all have been correct so far, oftentimes things weren't quite declared as clearly as they should have been in an ideal situation, so there's some gray area that can occur in that kind of thing happening. Yeah, but I'm, I'm very confident that our judges are just going to be um, making sure that everybody's on the same page. If they have to rewind the game a tiny little bit to say, okay, this is where we were all on the same page, they will do that. That's a possible fix here. Although this, this way of uh, rewinding it could give Marcello an advantage because then he could um, retroactively uh, use his hand trap here. But I, I don't think that he's got a real case to be made. Uh, with my limited information that I have here. Of course, we don't have the, in, uh, the communication at the table. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what we're waiting on here. Perhaps there's... So uh, there, there's, there's one... Um, uh, Jay Hill guesses that Luke might have declared his chain links wrong and Marcello didn't even realize that he could ash because of that. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna resolve this, guys. Don't worry about it. This is um, somewhat standard in um, in high-level play. I'm not saying that something like this happens all the time, but if there's a miscommunication between the players, the judges are uh, known to find ways to solve those problems. And I think that Toyn is just giving a, ru a ruling right now. He's explaining what what his ruling is. Marcello doesn't seem to like it very much. I think uh, regardless of the outcome of this ruling for Marcello, even if we were to rewind and see that Ash Blossom activated to prevent the search, uh, Luke would still be able to just normal summon whichever Gouki monster he still has, form a co-link under the firewall. I don't think he's used the uh, Trigate wizard in his extra deck yet. Trigate, co-link to a firewall, firewall effect, return the assault to his Marcello's extra deck, and that's 5,000 damage on the board. I, yeah. I, I don't see any situation where Luke doesn't finish this game off this very turn, however they end up ruling this. Okay. Sure. So, um, we just had a quick communication with the judges. Um, you can, <laughs> Jan, you can bring it to us. Um, so basically, the, the big question is, um, what, what has been happening at the table exactly? Um, the miscommunication is that, that Marcello Barberi didn't ask his opponent specifically, what are the chain links like? And so it was so uh, assumed that the effect in the graveyard was activated at the lower chain link, and Marcello could not respond with his Ash Blossom in hand. And then when the chain links were clarified, which basically happened during the resolution of the chain, because he didn't specifically ask before that. Luke just said, yeah, this effect, this effect, this effect. Marcello was like, yeah, whatever. Um, resolution starts, and then suddenly Marcello is realizing, wait a second, I could, I could ash here. And um, th that's when Marcello obviously wanted to um, change his mind and chain Ash Blossom, apparently. And um, so now he wants to do that, but we're in the resolution of a chain, which means you're no longer allowed to chain to it. So that, that is the miscommunication that happened at the table. Um, the, judge, the judge's initial ruling on the table was that both players agreed to the chain is going to be resolved. And Marcello did not feel or did not indicate that he wants to chain anything at all. And um, so the judge ruled that he cannot suddenly change his mind. Th this is a, maybe a, a poor way of wording it. It's not changing his mind, but he lost the opportunity to chain the Ash Blossom. Um, he would have had to do that in the in the build-up of the chain, in the construction of the chain. And um, yeah, and the, the judge just explained it again to us that, that Marcello basically said it was all right. Okay. Something like, yes, fine, or all right, or yes, go for it, resolving the chain. So um, 
regardless of that, you said it's very unlikely that it's going to make a difference in the grand yes. scheme of things. From a spectator's point of view, it's it's quite frustrating here because having the, the full information of the cards in the hand, we can see that Lux is still in a position right. to win this turn regardless of how this is ruled. Which so is, of course, not what Marcello knows. Marcello is holding onto that straw right now, hanging by a thread, and he's like, I, I might still somehow win this. Um, there was another event where he's a, he was... He had lost in uh, the top 8 or top 16 or something. Didn't do anything. He just sat there, waited for his opponent to finish his turn. And his opponent got actually a game loss for slow playing, which eventually gave Marcello the win. So it, it wasn't that Marcello had been asking for the touch to, to hand out a, a ruling or to hand out a warning or something, which is also unsportsmanlike conduct, by the way. Um, it just happened that way. And Marcello knows that these things can happen. You never know what happens at a tournament. And he's taking his chances. He wants to go to Worlds. Um, I cannot really blame him. Um, he, it's it's the right of a player to appeal to the head judge if he's not happy with a ruling that a judge has given him, and this is um, what what is happening right now. So um, the head judge moved over to the table. We cannot take you there because uh, both of the players have now no longer their headphones on, uh, the, those magical headphones that block all the outside noise. So we cannot um, we cannot talk about specific cards right now or, or indicate that the game is over or something like that because that would be giving one of the players possibly at least an advantage there's something like 10 meters between us and the players there's a very good chance that they're not listening to anything else but the head charge right now but we cannot risk it yes so uh, we just need to wait until the head judge has finished off his intervention here and then we'll be able to continue continue with the match as we were with whatever ruling is applied by the head judge. Yeah, so both players are currently uh, gesturing. They are trying to indicate both with their hands and with their words what went down. Uh, Luke Parks is basically explaining, I built this chain. Um, <laughs> just made a move like this, which is like, yeah, my opponent just said, yeah, fine. Um, so you can actually kind of tell what they are trying to convey here. And Marcello, of course, is like the opposite. He's like, no, 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 <laughs> wait, wait. This is the, the magical move here. I now want to change something, but I didn't realize we were in the resolution of the chain. Have we had an opportunity to look over the stats for the top eight before this match? No, not really. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are terribly interested in this, <laughs> to be honest. Don't, don't mean to sound uh, so mean here. Um, we can look at the country breakdown at the start of the top 64. Um, while this is still going down, you, you're not going to miss anything, guys. Um, let's try and bring up the country breakdown. Um, on the screen. This is how we went into the top 64, which is surprising considering that Germany sent 600 players and Italy 150 players. And then we had a bit of an up and down, a roller coaster ride with suddenly Germany taking the crown again during the top 32. So many of Italy's players falling from the top 64 to the top 32, but then they seem to stabilize as we continue through the rounds. Yeah, and just, just when it seemed like Greece was about to win this with six players in the top 32, we only got one Greek player remaining in the top 16, and now in the top 8 we have a very diverse field, well, somewhat diverse field. Italy suddenly back on top. It's it's a roller coaster ride of the nations here in the European Championship. I think we can go back to the table because the head judge has just left the table. Excellent. So um, we do have a ruling. We're not 100% sure what the ruling is. Uh, actually, we can see what the ruling is. Um, Marcello, I think Marcello has seen enough. Marcello has seen enough. Yeah, I was about to say. He just took off the headset because that was his way of indicating that this game is over for me, I'm afraid. And um, now we do have our winner advancing to the semi-finals in Luke Parks from the UK. And commiserations to Marcello losing to such a dreadful opening hand there. Yes, yes. It, it certainly wasn't his, um, his nicest feature match uh, from his perspective. His, his deck really let him down there. Um, we had some players say, well, if you play with one-fourth of your deck as a hand trap, it can happen that you draw into all of them at the same time. And that is just what happened here. So um, we have our first semi-finalist. Luke Parks is only one more win away from punching that ticket to Japan, where he's going to be playing in the World Championship, maybe playing in the World Championship. We can quickly look at the bracket for the top eight players for you guys in the upper left corner we know that Luke Parks has just advanced in the lower left corner it is um, Nicholas Meyer and Nicholas Meyer so 
if uh, Jake Quincy is able to win that match, we might see uh, a UK face-off in the semi-final. Yes. And on the other side of the bracket, there is a potential chance for an Italian face-off with Robin Bachofner going up against Alessandro Garanzini and Francesco Simoncelli going up against Startis Vastardis. All right, guys. That is how the tournament is shaping up. We have our first top four competitor, first semi-finalist. Let's hear it from Luke and Matt over at the analyst's desk. Hello and welcome back. Thank you very much, Thomas and Oliver. We do have Luke Parks waiting in the wings to talk about uh, his feature match. Matt, tell us more about it. Yeah, so we saw game one. We saw the uh, extra link of doom. There wasn't really a lot much. I had absolutely no interaction whatsoever. Decides, you know what? Takes a quick look. I'll pick up my cards. We'll try again. Yeah. And we get into game two and we see like really bad hands being like, well, not a lot of action being drawn by either player and a lot yeah. of hand traps. Let's, hey, let's bring Luke in. Come on in. You got to talk directly into the end of the microphone. Right. Cool. Luke's box. So you're famous. And apparently, congratulations, yeah. making it into the top there's, four. There's like the 12 UK mm -hmm. players all there. They're yeah, they're yeah, cheering. All my UK friends. Yeah. Just got my back. Bit of a tense game, I think, towards yeah. the end. Yeah. yeah. Game one was really easy. He opened no hand traps clearly, and I've done that extra link about 10,000 times. So. Yeah. Just needed to make sure that I declared all my chain links and everything was like, okay, but yeah, I had called by the grave as well. So when I drew my opening hand and I'd won the roll, I was like, yes. Um, I did yeah. something cool, which Tom Payne um, told me about, which is where if you leave yourself with the seven monsters, rather than making the last nightmare, they can't kaiju you to out the extra link because they can't put it in a main monster zone, nice. which is really cool. <laughs> um, I don't know if you played kaijus, but like, it was Still. worth- Just in case, why, yeah. Why, yeah. why take the risk, worth mentioning. right? Worth mentioning, it's worth, definitely. It's pretty cool, but yeah, yeah it was good. Just got to win one more. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's always our next thing to talk about. Yeah, what, you know how, how do you feel I mean, now about that? I don't know who I'm playing. That's the problem because it's either Jake Quincy or a trick star player. And um, Jake Quincy is obviously a really good friend of mine. We came here together. We hang out together all the time. So I want it to be Jake, but at the same time, for me to win, I want it to be the trick star player because it's a much yeah. easier game. <laughs> and Jake already beat me in twist. Oh, really? Oh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. What What do you What do you feel is going to be our best matchup then? You think it's going to be against the trick star? Yeah, I think trick star was definitely the best matchup going into the event. But today, so there's been three, the last three rounds, and then all the way up to here, I've played Goki Mirrors. So oh, wow. and, and I've won two dice rolls. But I think I've been fortunate, like uh, Callum Hinchcliffe said he had a dream yesterday that I was going to win Euros. So <laughs> it's coming I'm up. hoping he had deja vu and it wasn't just a dream, you know? It's, it's coming on, um, lads. It's coming on. Is that, is, that, is that what's going on? Yeah, I mean, I don't care if we win the World Cup as long as I win Euros. <laughs> you can like both things. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, if I can take both, I'll take both. But if I'm picking so, one... You're picking Euros. Well, so yeah, what, what I was going to tell you was um, you said about the matchup. So what we've got right here is the, the statistics of the entire of the tournament so far. So every game played between every other match apart from Mirrors. Yeah, so the Goki deck against all the Tricks, Tricks, uh, Trick, Trick Star. Sky Striker decks Sky Striker, Trick Star. Uh, are all here. So uh, the pure version, 53%, the this is Trick Star, to win, 59%, and the 57% for the Mech Knight version. Okay. That's all that's for Goki. That's as good as I thought it would be. Oh, no, no, that's very good. Is it? Yes. All right. <laughs> You have to imagine that's for every single Goki player that was that's playing true, yeah. during the weekend. So, so hard to play as well, like, yeah. correctly. Yeah, exactly. Whereas, yeah, yeah, difficult yeah. match. Do you think it's going to be a little weird that if you do face uh, Jake, that we're kind of guaranteed two spots at the World Championships, being being from the UK? Um, no, I think like in the recent like years, like the UK have got really good. Like we didn't used to have many big players, but like JY, like started doing really well. Went to Worlds last year. Like Darren this year. Like. Yeah. And we've all become a lot more open. Like we all test together, we all play together, and we all go to regionals together. Yeah. So the regional points thing has definitely helped the UK, like enormously. Like we've all yeah. got a lot better. And I, I, I think I, the UK are a lot better than they used to be. I think we had five, at least five people in the top 64, yeah. which oh, is like I think it was more than that, unheard of. Normally yeah. it's just Jake. Yeah. 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 Normally oh, yeah. it's just Jake. Um, I, I, it's good to hear you say what you just said. I had a conversation with JY actually just this very morning, which seems oh so long ago at this point. Um, about how the UK community developed, you know, over the past few years, and I feel like we were always going to struggle, 
because because uh, the UK community never had. Luke, you're not supposed to have a horse know, in this I know, race. I know, I know, yeah. You're neutral. The, the UK community never had a lot of uh, communication, whereas the the Italians, Germans, you know, yeah. uh, not so much the French players, but they had a lot of solidarity. And yeah. I feel like a few years ago, um, that's changed for the UK. Yeah, a few years ago, YCS Prague, the second one. Yeah. Uh, I lost the last round to an Italian guy who was playing in this Monarch deck, and he was like, "Yeah, me and uh, 34 of my friends are playing it," and I was like. I did, there's not 34 people in England that I test with. Yeah. I was like, but when you put that many minds together, they're going to come up with like a better deck. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Uh, it just sucked when you play each other. Yeah, yeah, well, well it's going to happen eventually. Yeah. Was that the... Was Marcello the player you were fearing the most to play in the in the top cut? Do you um, think it's going to be smooth sailing now, or is there another player that you're like... like... Everyone who's in the top like, at this far into the stage is going to be a struggle. Like, There's, there's no easy wins. Um, I mean, he's a big name, so I was like, oh, yeah, okay. But at the same time, like, I played against a lot of people, and he's just another person. Like, he can not draw a hand trap, and I can draw the combo, and I can win game one. That, yeah. like, that took so much pressure off. Then I was like, okay, well, I have to win one in two, and I've tested through every hand trap ever known. I know, like, you can do the full U-link through cherries if your hand's good enough. So, like, Sounds once like he was burning prepared. hand traps, like, yeah. I was like, okay, well, you're on less cards. Eventually, I'm going to be able to get to the Twist Cobra and... Super X, which is 5,400 damage. So like, yeah, that was uh, quite a large amount of damage. To yeah, I had to put a lot of damage on because of Octo Stretch. So Octo Stretch had half the damage of when I tributed the Twist Cobra. So it had to be game without the Twist Cobra. Yeah, um, it's interesting. You said that you know after the first game you felt like you know you only needed to win one out of two duels there. Oddly enough, you win 80% of your games over the course of the past season. Yeah, I've got a pretty that's good win God, record. That's God tier, by the way. Like, yeah, there's, a, there's like maybe three people I've seen with over 80%. Yeah, I think right now we're calling like anything over 80% is what we're considering pretty much God tier, and 70 plus is. 70 gets you the world, a, 80 is insane. Absolutely yeah. insane. Yeah, exactly. So, congratulations on that. Yeah, like, I play a lot, I love the game, it's great. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, no so the, the next match that you're going to face is going to be one of the most important you've ever had. So. Yep, I can't wait. <laughs> That's the kind of face that tells me that you're not be looking forward to it. Yeah, I don't know. I've got my friends behind me. That's all I can ask. You've got this. Yep. Yeah. All right, well, best of luck to Luke Parks for his, uh, for his next match. It's going to be a very important one. And we're going to be right back with even more coverage from the European Championships 2018. See you guys soon.